Well, good evening and welcome to the Ash Wednesday service this evening here to begin our Lenten season. And I uh, would like to welcome everyone here and those who are online for joining us today. And uh, we have that promise of warm weather coming in. I kind of think that's a great thing because when we start off Ash Wednesday kind of kicks off the warmer weather season as well. And so I kind of look forward to both of those things at one time. And tonight we're going to begin a, a uh, spiritual journey that will span 40 days from Ash Wednesday until Holy Saturday before Resurrection Sunday. And in the early days of the church, the season of Lent was a time of preparation for new believers as they prepared their hearts for holy baptism. And that typically occurred on Easter Sunday each year. And since these new members were to be received into a living community of faith, the entire community was called to preparation. And also this was a time when those who had been separated from the church because of explicit sin or something that would separate them from God. It was a time for them to prepare to rejoin the, that community of faith. And as we go through the service tonight, you're going to see a, a video clip that kind of reminds us of what this preparation season is about, this Lenten season. So today, as, as we begin this Lenten season, a season of prayer, of fasting, self-examination and repentance for all of us as Christians, as followers of Christ, as we prepare for that celebration of come Easter. Through this 40 day journey, we are reminded that we are totally unworthy and that there is no way for us to obtain salvation. Our best efforts at being righteous fall far short. And there's, that's the importance of reading the Old Testament and, and even into the New Testament is to understand that no matter what we have done as a people, we fall short of the glory of God, fall short of being righteous. This season reminds us of how much we need God's grace in our lives. It is in that grace that we can live a transformed life that reflects God's love. We are called to renew our commitments and our faith as we continually acknowledge our need of God's transforming grace. So one can see if we, if we take a reflection as we're called to do during this season of Lent is to look at this as a cleansing of our souls. And just as our homes fill with things, we too fill our lives with things of the world. And so it is a time for reflection. It's a time to reflect on Jesus and the 40 days in the wilderness that he spent. This is a time of stillness and of focus and of repentance. And it reminds me of a verse in Psalm 46.10 that said, Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. And I will be honored throughout the world. When we do this, we can truly focus on what is important, remembering what Christ did for us. Because what do you do in this stillness? When we're reflecting on God, when we're being quiet and we're reflecting, we can truly then just be with him and we can focus on those things that are important. Isaiah 53, 5 says, but he was pierced for our rebellion crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. We invite you to the observance of Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's Word. As we begin this journey and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now invite God to examine our hearts as we wait silently before him in prayer 
before the imposition of the ashes. Please join with me now in your prayer of confession that we're on the slips of paper. If you don't have one, please let us know and we'll get one for you. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and in word and in deed. And by things we have done and by things we have left undone. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And we are truly sorry and we humbly repent and ask for your forgiveness for our shortcomings. We ask by the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to have mercy on us and forgive us, that we might delight in your goodness and your will, so that we may walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Let us continue to pray. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. May these ashes be a sign for our frailty and our repentance. And a reminder that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And as we come forward for the imposition of the ashes tonight, I ask that you would come down the center aisle and then wrap back to your seats. Um, for those of you who have not had this done before, it is uh, a two-part process. So uh, Terry will bestow the, the anointing oil on you, and I will bestow the ashes upon you.
As we enter into this time of communion this evening, uh, we are called to remember our mortality. And through the season of Lent, we're called to, again, remember our mortality. As the imposition of ashes were drawn upon your head, the words from, dash, from ashes we were formed into ashes we will return is a reminder of the finality of our lives. And through the sacrifice of Christ on the cross, we are given a release from that finality into everlasting life by faith in Jesus Christ. As I give you communion today, as we present the elements to you, I want you to think about yourself being released from your sin, from the trappings of this world, the sacrifice that Christ made on your behalf by giving of his body and giving of his blood to wash us clean from those sins, from his fall with the sins of man and to his rising back to the Father. Let us remember the sacrifice that he made for us, for each one of us, and for all mankind. Scriptures remind us of what this meal is about. For it was on the night that Jesus was betrayed that he took the bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you take and eat. Likewise, a little later in the meal, he picked up the cup and he filled it, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood shed for your sin. Take and drink. The scriptures remind us, for as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we are to do so until Christ's return. It is a reminder just like the ashes on your forehead now of what God has done for us and for what we have in store for us. I think about it like this. We may spend 70, 80, 100 years on this planet, but when it all comes down to it and we are in heaven with each, in for eternity, a million years from now, it won't, 70, 80, 90 years won't matter. It will just have been a blip. So everything that we go through is just a blip. And this is our self. This is a reminder of our salvation. Does everyone have a cup? The body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Gracious and most loving God, we thank you for what this meal represents. It reminds us each time that we come together and share in this meal that your son, who lived a blameless life, was accused, charged, beaten, and ultimately died for each one of us, for the sins we have committed here on earth. Father, we thank you that you sent your son to do that for us. And as we enter this time of repentance, of waiting, of self-reflection, and of spending time in quiet with you, Father, this season of Lent, let us be reminded daily that because of your grace, we are good enough because you have made us righteous through that free gift. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Receive this blessing before we go out into the world. Gracious Lord, we praise you and thank you for the opportunity to gather here freely and openly in your presence today. Thank you, Lord, that you're joined together with us here, both in your presence and in our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings you give us each and every day. Open our eyes to see them, our ears to hear them, and 
our hearts to receive them in. Help us to know you more fully each and every day. As we go through this season of Lent, remind us of your suffering. Remind us that you denied yourself life to give us life. Remind us, Lord, that it's not about giving up a food or an item. The self-denial is denying ourselves of the selfishness of the world. Lord, help us to prepare our hearts for your resurrection heart that you have for us and that we have that promise of eternity to spend in the room that you have gone to prepare ahead of time for us. And when we come to join you, Lord, let us just be full of praise, honor, and glory that we were counted among the believers to join in your presence for all eternity. Thank you, Lord God, for the blessings you give us. In your precious and holy name we pray. Thank you for joining us this evening as we start this Lenten season, and we look forward to seeing each of you on this coming Sunday as Pastor Mark kicks off our Overcomer series, and in a couple of weeks. In fact, it's two weeks from Sunday. Two weeks. <laughs> two short weeks. We will be having our very first service. We will be having our very first service in our new location, 310 3rd Street Southeast. Services will move back to 10 o'clock. So we are looking very forward to making that move. Please pray for our, the logistics and everything that we need to get done as we prepare to move into that space. And if you're free Saturday and you got some Hot Wheels laying around, join us right here uh, at 2808 Schaefer Drive. And we'll be racing some Hot Wheels in person again for the first time in several months. We're looking forward to getting back to that. And we have movie night coming up. Uh, we have movie night coming up on March 6th, and it'll be in our new space. And uh, we're going to have the movie War Room. And it's an awesome, awesome movie. And... Uh, I think everybody will be greatly moved by the movie. I know if you do nothing else, if you go up on YouTube and you watch the vignette that they have posted up there, they've got a little trailer of her prayer session time. And if that doesn't stir you and move you, I'm not sure exactly what will. Um, it's a real blessing. It's a time of blessing. So thank you again for coming this evening. As we leave tonight, um, please understand that this is a solemn time and, and we want to have you uh, observe a time of silence at this point in time and then we'll go ahead and leave for the evening. Thank you. As you do leave, our prayer sheets are on the back table there, so please feel free to grab one so that you can join us in praying for those folks. Lord, we come before you right now and we lift up those who are hurting, those who have had loss, those who have medical issues and medical procedures, those who are suffering through grief, those who are dealing with any kind of loss at this point in time, whether it's loss of a job, loss of a loved one going through struggles and changes in their lives. Lord, we lift them up to you right now. And we ask your blessing upon them. 
We ask that we can join together in Christian fellowship to lift each other up and to edify each other in your spirit. And we ask a special blessing to come on us now. We claim the victory over this world in your name, Father God, and in and through your Son, Jesus.